What is your background and how did you come to realize that you had psychopathy? My pseudonym is Emmy Thomas. I wrote the book Confessions of a Sociopath, a life spent hiding in plain sight. I'm a lawyer. I, I'm, you know, middle-aged now. I am a diagnosed psychopath. I have a big family. I, I live in a small community in uh, California where I grew up. I enjoy playing with my nieces and nephews. I was a music major and I have a jam session later on that I'm going to and I mostly just live a normal life. I think I never understood the word psychopathy. I never understood the word psychopath until I was doing an internship. It was during law school and I had a uh, office mate who, you know, this, this internship, it was, it was supposed to be like a nine to five thing, but really we only had like two hours of work per day or something. So we started talking and she was a very interesting person. I think that the nature of the conversations were probably maybe a little bit more open than I realized. After several weeks of this, she said, you might want to consider the possibility that you're a sociopath. And so I just looked it up and found a website that had like, you know, 12 criteria or something. And I kind of read through it and I was like, actually, this does seem to fit. You know, people had been telling me all my life, you know, think more about others, consider others. You know, what about other people's safety? What about other people's feelings? What about other people's needs? And that was not a very uh, useful thought for me because I, I was so bad at it. I, I, I mean, it just went so far against the grain that I basically, you know, I was terrible at it. I, I, even if I tried to, I'd forget the next day and then it was like back to the same sort of behavior. And I think one of the things that kind of struck me is that, uh, you know, the, probably the, the labels that I think are fit more closely are that I, I really didn't feel guilt. You know, I understood that I didn't feel guilt. I understood that people had tried to shame me before into feeling guilt. I remember this time when I was you know, eight or nine or something, we're watching TV and there's this kid on the screen and he was, you know, disabled or something. And I made a joke about it. I made a joke about how he was disabled. And my dad said, have you no empathy? And was just kind of like shocked and disturbed by whatever the joke was. And I thought to myself, uh, what is empathy? And maybe I don't have it because, you know, I, I, th I think I asked him, what is empathy? You know, and he started telling me, okay, you start feeling the, for other people. And I thought, well, definitely I don't do this. I mean, it is one of my more negative traits, especially when like during my twenties, I call that kind of like the playground stage because that was like when all of my psychopathic traits were at their peak. And if somebody cried, I would get angry with them. You know, I, I thought crying is kind of a, a manipulative tactic because you know I don't understand crying, especially if we had like a close relationship. They were a friend for several years. You know, they know I don't understand the crying. Why are they crying? Almost kind of like a use your words with a toddler thing. That would be my reaction with them. And then of course they just keep crying because it's like a terrible thing to engage with somebody. You're crying, you're upset, you know. So I had a friend whose dad was dying of cancer and like after a while I just couldn't take it anymore. I was like, you know what? You are way too emotional. I cannot handle your emotion. Let's take a break from each other. And I'm, I think her dad died while we were during this break, you know, that I took, which was, you know, I can't handle your emotion while your dad's dying. I mean, now I look back at it and I think that's not being a good friend. But at the time I just thought, you know, honestly, I do not have the emotional depth, the capacity, the empathy to be able to deal with this. 